Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to construct influence lines for a beam. We will be using the quantitative approach, and we will be examining this particular beam. We are being asked specifically to generate four influence lines. One involves the moment at A, one involves the internal shear at section 1-1, one, one. one involves the internal shear at section 2-2, two, two, and also for the reaction at C. The quantitative approach involves placing unit loads at key locations along the length of the beam. Now those key locations are anywhere that you have supports, releases, or points of interest. So if we were to identify those here, point A, section 1-1, is a point of interest. We've got a moment release. We've got a section of interest here, 2-2 and we also have a support here at C. You have a very important question that you need to be able to answer and that question is this. How are you going to solve for all of the requested unknowns? So there are four of them, right? You need to get that straight in your mind at the very beginning of this process so that no matter where the load is being placed you know what approach you are going to take. So let me describe this to you. We'll do this by first looking at when the load is placed at point A. What I know is back on the original structure is that I have four external reactions which appears to me as if I cannot solve for any of those reactions. However, if you do the analysis you will understand that we are statically determinate on this beam and that it's going to require us to cut the structure apart at the moment release simply to be able to solve for the reaction at C. And that's the first step regardless of what response you are looking at. Cut at the moment release and solve for the reaction at point C. And so that's what's being done here is we do have a free body diagram up there at the very top and think about how you would solve for that reaction at C. You would do so by summing moments about point B. If you do that you'll find that this reaction is indeed zero. Once you know the reaction at C, you can reassemble the structure and start cutting it apart at the places where you need to know something internal. So let's keep in mind that we now have this reaction here as being zero. We have now cut at section 1-1. Remember where our unit load is. It's over here, so it's actually not on our free body diagram. We are trying to solve for the shear at section 1. So if you sum forces in the Y, I'm going to write that here, some forces in the Y, we would then find out that the shear here is zero. Now I can make a cut at section two. Remember we still have that unit load over here, but I'm looking at the free body diagram there to the right, and if I sum forces in the Y direction, knowing that this is zero, then my shear right here is going to be zero. And then the last response quantity I am needing is for the moment at A, I need to know this reaction at CY, which we already have as being zero. If I sum moments about point A, then I will very quickly find that the moment at A is zero. Now what I've done is I've just stepped you through for the load being at point A. But what you need to recognize here is that your key to the solution of this entire problem is going to be the sequence. No matter where the load is, follow this ex same exact sequence. And then we will be able to get the response quantities and avoid confusion as we proceed. So let's move on. Let's place the load at the next key location. So the next key location is going to be at 1. So on all these free bodies, I'm going to just go ahead and sketch this. All right, so we start at the very top. We know that we are summing moments at B to solve for RCY. If you do that, that's zero, because you're only considering the right section from where you made the cut. Thus, I can go ahead and fill that in here. I now know that RCY is zero. Let's move down to the next section. So I make a cut at 1, 
and then I will use the sum of forces in the y. Now the question you have to answer, and this is part of the process, is that unit load, is it just to the left of the section or is it just to the right? So I want you to consider it just to the left, which means it does not show up on the free body diagram, and what that will tell us is that the shear at the left side of that will be zero. If you move that point load just to the right of your cut, now all of a sudden it appears on the free body diagram if you sum forces in the y direction, that will work out to be a positive one. Let's go down to the next one. We said that what we would do here is we would sum forces in the y, and just using the right section, we get that that is zero. And then for the last one, we said that we would sum moments about point A. And if we do that, we compute the moment at A is equal to negative four feet. Strange units for moment, but since the force has no units on it, a moment then is just that force multiplied by a distance, and that's where we get the feet. Next, let's go ahead and move the unit load to point B, and then follow the sequence. Starting up at the top, we sum moments about point B and find out that the reaction at CY is equal to zero. We then look here, the shear at one, some forces in the y will tell me that that's 1. Let's go ahead and get those known values in here. Let's go to the third segment. Here's that v2. And if I sum forces in the y, that will work out to be 0. Then the very last one, if I sum moments, I will find that the moment at a is equal to negative 12 feet. We've got just two more locations to consider. Location 2. Then, if I sum moments about point B, I will find that the reaction at CY is equal to 0 0.5. Then move on to the next one, sum forces in the vertical direction, and that will tell me that the shear at 1 is 0 0.5. Now that I'm at the point of interest, point 2, in order to find V2, I need to say, is the point load on the left? or is it on the right? So at first let's put this on the left, which means that that unit load doesn't appear on the free body diagram. And when I do that, I will get my shear to be negative 0.5. Now I need to assume that that point load is just to the right of the cut. Now it appears on the free body diagram. When I run this, the shear is equal to a positive 0.5. Lastly, some moments about point A and find that the moment at A is negative 6 feet. Considering our very last location, we will put the unit load at C, then we will sum moments about point B, find out that our CY is equal to 1, and then stepping through the process, summing forces in the Y, I find out that that's 0, summing forces in the Y, I find out that that's 0, summing moments about A, find out that that is zero. So that handles all the statics, and that's really the tedious part of this. What we then need to do is we need to transfer this over to a set of diagrams, because remember we're trying to sketch the influence lines for these separate response quantities. So I'm going to come back here, whenever the load is at A, I want you to pay attention to what the responses are for each of these. RCY is 0, so I will plot that down here at 0. Shear at 1 is 0, so I plot that at 0. Shear at 2 is 0, and the moment at A are both 0. So I'll go ahead and get that. Now let's go to point 1. Okay, RCY is 0. Now the shear just to the left of point 1 is 0, but the shear just to the right of point 1 is a positive 1. So I'll plot this here as 0, and then a 1. In fact, I'm going to avoid confusion here, and I'm just going to connect these dots as we go. Let's go here. Shear at 2 is 0, but the moment is negative 4 feet. So let's go ahead and get those plotted in here negative 4. 
then we go on to when the load's at the midpoint. Just take a quick look at all of your responses here. 0, 1, 0, negative 12. And I can plot those up here as well. 0, 1, 0, negative 12. So let's go ahead and connect those dots. And then in a like fashion, just go ahead and do that for points 2 and C. So this will come out to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Just to the left, it'll be negative 0 0.5. Just to the right, it'll be positive 0 0.5. And then we've got negative 6. And then at the last point, we've got a 1, 0, 0, and 0. So we can just go ahead and connect the dots, shade these in, connect the dots, shade it in as such. And now we have the influence lines for those four response quantities. Remember the key to this approach is as you begin to do the equilibrium, decide on what the equilibrium approach is that you are going to use, and then regardless of where the point load is being placed, follow that sequence very diligently and you will avoid all kinds of confusion as you proceed. That concludes this example. As always, it's a beautiful day for studying structure.